to another edition of The Ride Home with John and Kathy, live from the Salem-Pittsburgh studios. And now, here are your hosts, John Hall and Kathy Emmons. Hey, good afternoon. Gorgeous, absolutely perfect oh. Monday afternoon here in the city. This is when you're so happy you live in the Northeast. Yes, truly you are. Of the right? U.S. It's just such it's a perfect. lovely time. How about the leaves? This so peak, amazing. So gorgeous. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's really something. But you know the cold's coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect today, though, isn't it? I took a walk. I think it's 74 today. Mm, is it? I watched some baseball across the street there. Which isn't Point Park is playing some baseball. I was going to say, it's not some World Series baseball. No, I watched different. some baseball. I watched some uh, playoff baseball over the weekend as well. Have a good weekend? I had a great weekend. Are you excited about the World Series? Not particularly. Okay. Which is more often Rather than not the up. case, right? I mean, it's uh-huh. the Astros who... The past six years, they, they've owned everything. They they're are cheaters, cheaters. Right. And the Phillies. I like the Phillies. Well, What's your problem with the Phillies? They're just, you know, the From Phillies. From Philadelphia. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, they're cross-state. I mean, it's, you know, a what, it's like, like you're saying, you like the Flyers? Flyers are different. Flyers are felons. <laughs> well, the Phillies aren't too far behind. No, they're way better. Um, no, I think the Phillies are way better than the Flyers. I mean, I'm just... I don't even mind the Eagles. And believe me, mm, no, that's gonna no, that's, do that. it's gonna be a rough day next really? Sunday when the Steelers have to play. See, them. when I hate on them, it's like you know, like like the Yankees. So glad they're not there. Me too. But at the same time, I don't want to see the Jets or anybody. I don't mind can. the Jets. Or, the Jets have been so bad for so decades. Why do you care about the Jets? Because it's New York sports fans. Oh, okay. Well, they're going to be, right? they're good this year, mm-hmm. which I can't believe I'm saying out loud. Exactly. They've won five games in a row, I think. So that's your family, right? Uh-huh. Are they Jets My family, fans? Jets and Mets. <laughs> May up. All right, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> thanks. thanks for giving my family the pass. <laughs> I love your family. I mean, what are you going to do, right? That's, that's good. That's sweet of you. Very nice. Very nice day indeed. Um, we yep. got a big show for you We today. do. We have a lot coming Holy up smokes. in the next couple hours. Uh, in the five o'clock hour, did the pandemic change people? people's personalities undoubtedly do you think yes or maybe it just no it crushed people okay. it changed people do you, you don't think you changed during the pandemic i, I mean I, yeah for sure i changed yeah. but i don't know if my personality changed hmm. well we're gonna talk about it okay all right also uh we'll talk to the blessing board and hear new stuff that they're doing uh, also 23 things to do this week in pittsburgh because it's the height of fall mm-hmm it's good weather. There's so many. I mean, you should just not go to work the rest of the week. Which just, includes a big one for you, the Polish Film Festival. Which I didn't Who even knew? know was a thing. Polish Film Festival. I'm very excited. Of course, we're not going to be able to pronounce any of the of the screenwriters <laughs> no, or not. directors, which is sad. But instead of having popcorn, you could have pierogies. Uh, also, how many quiet quitters? What's the percentage of quiet quitters that are making up mm-hmm. the U.S. workforce? And then in this hour, we'll talk about supporting adoption in a post-Dobbs America. And um, the White House, Kanye. Oh, Kanye, man, did he bottom out? Well, you know, what he said is vile, it is vile. Yes, that's what I mean about bottoming out. Yeah, so, uh, not a lot of sympathy for Kanye. Not, no, I don't no. think so. Anyway, uh, that's that. Let's take a look at the news yep. of the day because there's a lot going on. Kath, as we always do, we give us the news the top four at four. Of course, the top story today is the shooting that happened just after 9 a.m. at the Central Visual and Performing Arts High School in St. Louis. More coverage from Salem News will be coming throughout today's show. Number one. Oh, it's for Monday, the 24th of October, John. Mm-hmm. Were you yawning just then? No. Okay. No, no. Were you? I'm a, I, I slept so good last night. Do you ever do this? You sleep really good and then you're still a little sleepy? Oh, yeah. What is the it's deal? It's like you slept so well that you want to keep doing I, I it. Your body yeah. was so into it. I'm looking it forward to, to 1030. It. Okay, I'll, I'll try to pick you up with these <laughs> stories. You. Number one. Rishi Sunak will be the next prime minister of the UK mm. following Liz Truss's announcement last week that she'll step down with pretty much zero support. Uh, he's 42 years old. He's going to be the country's third prime minister in under two months. The youngest one since 1812, and the first person of color to serve in the role. All right. He's of Indian heritage. He is also of Hindu faith. Um, he and his wife, who's a tech heiress, uh, they're some of the wealthiest people in the UK. Really? Mm-hmm. He runs. A, he used to run a hedge fund. Right? Yes. Uh, he served as Treasury Secretary under Boris Johnson, and uh, many conservative members of Parliament will be hoping that his economic credentials will help them do anything that will put the country in the positive. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway. And you think, did she marry up or did he marry Well, up? it seems like they married at... Equal opportunity. Yeah, well, maybe he, he married up. Well, you married a tech heiress, Yeah, right? I mean, she's... Right? But he's the PM now. That's not too shabby either, right? 
wasn't too shabby for Liz Truss for that. <laughs> for this couple breaths that she was able to inhale and exhale. days and a nice pension. Where she had to resign. It's from CBS. Number two. Salman Rushdie's agent, John, says the author has lost sight in one eye and the use of a hand as he recovers from attack from a man who rushed on the stage of Chautauqua Institution over the summer. Uh, I, you know, I grew up at Chautauqua. I, I still can't get in my head the fact that that really happened. I know. Shocking. And the Pittsburgh connection to it. Yeah, of course. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Rushdie offered three serious, w- uh, suffered three serious wounds to his neck and fifteen more to his chest and torso in the attack. He's seventy-five years old. He, of course, spent years in hiding after Iran's Ayatollah Khomeini issued an edict in 1989 calling for his death after the publication of that novel, The Satanic Verses. Um, the man who attacked him is 24 years old. I didn't realize he was that young. He's been incarcerated after pleading not guilty. The only thing he has really said is that he supported Khomeini. Great. Is that, that's that's like, your platform. Yeah. Like, why did you do this? And that's what he said. Number three. Math scores among fourth and eighth grade students across the country experienced their largest decline Yikes. in decades, according to the National Assessment of Educational Progress. Peggy Carr, commissioner of that organization, the organization that conducted the study, said in a statement that the results reflect the profound toll the pandemic took on student learning. I mean, nine-year-olds, those test scores went down the largest margin in 30 mm. years. Mm. I mean, how can you make that up? When we when we went into this COVID thing, we just had no idea. Mm. We had no idea the toll it was going to take. Number four, a California state judge handed a victory to a bakery owner who refused to make a wedding cake for a same-sex couple, citing religious objections. Kern County Superior Court Judge J. Eric Bradshaw ruled that California's Department of Fair Housing and Employment failed to show that Tastry's bakery owner, Kathy Miller, violated the state's Civil Rights Act by intentionally discriminating against the couple. Quote, the evidence affirmatively showed that Miller's only intent, her only motivation was fidelity to her sincere Christian beliefs. Her only motivation in creating and following the design standards and in declining to involve herself in designing a wedding cake for a marriage at odds with her faith was to observe and practice her own. That's according to The Hill. And last but not least, this is a bonus. I want to say happy anniversary to Eric Emmons. Hey. Today's the big wedding anniversary, and it's a big one. How many? 30. 30 today. That's your top four at four. Congratulations on 3-0. 3-0. Excellent. Very nice. Thank you. So you're not going anywhere. Uh, well, my husband has uh, RSV. Right. We were in the Med Express on Saturday for several hours while he was being assessed. RSV isn't that a kid's disease? It is for most kids' part. malady, right? Yeah, but a lot of a lot of adults are getting it now. Respiratory um, syncytial virus. How's he doing? Uh, he was so sick on Saturday. I was pretty scared. It seemed COVID-like to me mm-hmm. because of his the difficulty he was having breathing. Today, after he got his meds and he has had them for a couple of days. He's way better. Much better. Way, way better. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's still not like this is like great anniversary time. Like we're going to go out for dinner yeah. and we're going on. 30. Good thing we didn't plan a big vacation. Right. For yeah. our 30th because we wouldn't have been going. Are you doing anything? No, probably not. Uh, no, we did decide that we're going to go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> nothing Nothing says 30 years old. 30 year marriage. Like, let's what go for think? a walk. We're going for a walk Woo-hoo. tonight. <laughs> exactly. I love you and we are going we're for going a walk. We're going to take a trip. But we just don't know exactly when. Hey. And all I can say is I was feeling badly that we didn't plan it. And now I'm so glad we didn't plan it. Of course. It because yeah, yeah. that would have been terrible. Take a trip in the wintertime. Do you think we should? To the West Coast. I'd be nice. Mm-hmm. Or Wouldn't Florida. would be great to go to California? Yes. I don't, know, I don't like Florida. But I've never been on the Gulf Coast, but I like the Gulf Coast. Yeah, but you don't want to go there now because no. of the hurricane. Right? Maybe we won't go anywhere. Go to California. Okay. 101.5 WORD. Getting older has its limitations, but aging shouldn't stop you. Ahead from Chuck Swindoll. I've always liked Jim Dobson's description, how fast aging comes. About the time your face clears up, your mind gets fuzzy. It happens quick. So you're aging. Welcome to the club. Join us when Chuck Swindoll presents his brand new series called Clinging to Hope, Monday through Friday on Insight for Living. Tomorrow morning at 8 on 101.5 WORD. Hi, this is John Hall. You've all helped build my pillow into the incredible company it is today, and I've trusted in Mike Lindell to give you a great night's sleep. 
On top of the special exclusively from my listeners on the Brickell and Giza Dream bed sheets, marked down as low as $29.98, Mike is now changing the game with his three-piece towel set. The set is made with USA cotton, making it extremely absorbent, yet still providing that soft feel you look for in a towel. The set comes with one bath, one hand towel, one washcloth, typically retailing for $49.99. Now, for a limited time, you get this three-piece towel set for the low price of $19.98 with a promo code WORD. Don't miss out on this incredible offer. It's a limited supply, so be sure to order now. Call 1-800-391-0954, use the promo code WORD, or go to MyPillow.com. Click on the radio listener square and use promo code WORD. These offers will not last long, so order now with promo code WORD at MyPillow.com for this radio-exclusive offer on all bed sheets. All of us come from somewhere. All of us have origin stories. From executive producer Larry Elder. Divine Providence was clearly operating in the lives of black Americans. And director Justin Malone. When I was growing up, we were never taught that America was bad. We were raised to love America. Comes the continuation of their 2020 hit film, Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom Part 2, An American Odyssey. Available on Salem Now. Train up a child in the way they should go. Well, you know the rest. It's a calling you take very seriously as a Christian parent. And Trinity Christian School in Forest Hills seeks to honor your commitment by working together with parents to prepare students who are academically sound and spiritually ready to take their place in the world through a classical approach to education that helps build a faith from which they will never depart. Trinity Christian School, one of the top K-12 schools in Allegheny County at trinitychristian.com. Hello, this is John Guest. We would like to invite you to a citywide prayer gathering at Christ Church at Grove Farm, Thursday, October the 27th, 6.30 to 8 in the evening, to pray together for the next midterm election, that candidates will be elected who will stand for biblical values and that Christians will get out and vote in what will be a monumentally critical election. This is John Guest. Go for it. Every Monday, we always go to the White House to uh, see Greg Clugston. Imagine being at the White House on a regular basis. What, what is that like? Well, to me, it seems like it would you'd have a, a relatively high tension level at all times. But maybe if you like, if you'd work in a hospital, you would just get used to that, and then it wouldn't seem like high tension. Right. It's just part of the job. Right. Greg Clugston is with us live from the White House, SRN News White House correspondent. Greg, welcome back. How are you, sir? <clears throat> John, Kathy, I'm doing well. Great to be here. Thank Excellent. you. Are you at the White House today? Not today. Mm -hmm. Good. Got a little, a little time away from the uh, White House. There. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was working today, just uh, working out of a different studio. Okay. All right. So, is it tense? Did you hear what we were talking about when you came in? We were, we were saying, no. we were saying, no. oh, working at the White House, it must be a tense atmosphere. Often, is, is that true? Is that true? Well, yeah. I mean. <laughs> There are big stories that happen, and often the president of the United States, no matter who that president is, responds to major domestic stories, major foreign policy stories. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, uh, I personally, as a journalist, don't view them necessarily as intense, as opposed to you know, um, almost excitement. You know, there's there's kind of this there's there's this vibe, there's this energy mm -hmm. um, that um, that journalists often really feed on in terms of, hey, this is late breaking. Um, I know this is going to require a deadline and a quick turnaround and getting the story right and uh, getting it fast. And that that can be tense. But uh, for for most of us, I think it's it's something we look forward to from time to time. I like it. That's very interesting. That's a good attitude, Greg. I All like right. that. You're in the right place. You sure are. All right. Speaking of the president, um, he's making some uh, bold claims or maybe just being optimistic. He says the next two weeks are going to be big for Dems. <laughs> well, you know, that's right, Kathy. He did say that, um, and he was asked about the recent poll numbers and his campaign schedule and all the rest as he's he's out on the trail somewhat for um, members of the Democratic Party ahead of the midterms just two weeks from tomorrow now, even though there are a lot of early voting, you know, early votes being cast across the country, several million so far, in fact. But he said he understands and acknowledged that the poll numbers, as we've talked about here on Monday afternoons for the last number of weeks, uh, is that these poll numbers have gone over the 
course of the past few months in one direction, then shifted to another, and now maybe back again. And we talked about it a week ago that Republicans were seeing some very encouraging numbers. Uh, that still remains the case this week, although there are some new poll numbers even out today from CNN and some other uh, polling news organizations showing very tight races and some 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 movement for the Democrats. And that's exactly what Biden was saying. He thinks there's going to be another shift uh, toward Democrats for the next couple of weeks. Now, he's being optimistic, of course. Uh, politicians are known to uh, be talking about, you know, these kinds of things uh, to to generate, you know, excitement on for the base and uh, not turn off voters and all the rest. So we'll have to see if that momentum, if there is any for Democrats, continues. What's interesting is Democrats in the state of Florida are worried that Florida, which has for 20 or more years been a swing state, mm -hmm. Um, may be finally swinging and staying in the Republican direction. That's the concern among Democrats. You remember Donald Trump, uh, he won Florida in 16 and in 20, and that came after Barack Obama winning Florida twice. So we'll have to see what happens uh, going forward. But Florida is one of those uh, one of those states that Republicans are really, uh, really seeing a lot of success right now. Interesting. I mean, it's very exciting here in Pennsylvania, Greg. Of course, yeah. uh, the U.S. Senator race with uh, Oz and Fetterman. People are watching that very closely. And, and the I, president was here, of course, last week. He was. And, and I don't mm -hmm. know if there's any clear consensus. I thought initially that Fetterman uh, really was a lock on this, but it doesn't feel that way anymore. No. It certainly like doesn't. Dr. Oz has surged here recently. No, he he absolutely has, and that's one. You're you're looking at one of the races that's getting a lot of national attention, mm -hmm. of course. And uh, now the CNN poll that came out that I was looking at earlier today shows Fetterman uh, ahead of Oz, fifty-one to forty-five. Oh. You know, but the margin of error um, cuts that into you know down to maybe just one or two percent. And of course, they've got a big debate. I think is it tomorrow night? It is I tomorrow night. Yeah, which yeah. will be very interesting. So that's coming up, and yeah, that that could. Uh, and of course, the health issues are. are our concern um, sure. talking about Fetterman. And uh, there was, of course, uh, President Biden campaigning with him yesterday, forcing poor John Fetterman to ditch his hoodie and put on a, a coat what? and tie. I got to be honest, I didn't recognize the guy. <laughs> <laughs> and see, their shorts are bust for him usually. So. Yeah, right. He was wearing a size Sim suit, though. You know he was. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, was. he was. Gre Greg Clexon's with us from the White House, SRN News White House correspondent. Uh, Greg, so um, I, I saw a, a lot, an interview with uh, the president um, a couple of days ago where it appears as though he nodded off momentarily in the course of the interview. And then right on the heels of that, he also commented, on his age. Can you speak about that? Yeah, he was asked about his age. Now, look, Joe Biden, he's going to turn 80 next month. He has a November birthday. Holy cow. Uh, and there's already talk when you look ahead to him possibly running for re-election that he would, you know, be 82 come time for um, an inauguration the second time around. Oh, wow. And he, he said a couple of things that were of interest. He, first of all, said, look, I am physically and mentally capable of serving a potential second term. So he's like, even though I have not officially declared a candidacy yet for re-election, uh, should I do that? I am fit for the job. That was his argument, part one. But the, the more interesting point of what he said in that conversation, it was an MSNBC interview, is that it is totally legitimate, he said, for voters to question whether someone his age can handle hmm. the stress of being the president of the United States. He said that is a legitimate question, but then he flipped it around to say, okay, it's a legitimate question, and I'm answering it by saying I'm physically and mentally fit for the job. Hmm. I don't know about that. I, I, I got to be honest, I didn't know he was going to be 80. I had him a couple years younger than Did that. You know? Yeah, so I mean, eighty-two at inauguration day. I, that wow. seems you don't want to, you know, be, be accused of ageism, but at the same time, that, that's pretty old. And eighty-six or so, whenever he would. Finish, I mean, I was I listen. Know. I was watching the Steeler game last night and nodded off. And Me I'm too. a lot younger than that. I'm tired. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that had something to do with the offense, though. Because well, bad. I was going to say it might have to do with the team and not. You know, yeah. What's that? You're I, up a I won't bit. go there. I I, I, I I like your listeners. I want them to like me. I won't go there. No, <laughs> Thank I you understand. For your kindness. That's Greg Clugston with us, SRN News White House correspondent. Um, did the Washington Commanders end up winning yesterday's game? They did. Yeah, I thought surprisingly they did. over okay. the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, yeah, good for you. With a backup quarterback. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, sorry, I just had to insert that. Okay, so let's talk about former President Donald Trump and the January sixth committee. So he's been subpoenaed to appear there, but what happens? What happens if that in? So that's probably going to happen after the election. 
Would the subpoena be revoked if the if the power balance changes? And will that will the power balance of the House change that committee? What is what does that mean? Yeah, I think, Kathy, the short answer is the president, uh, the former president, Donald Trump, he could wait this out after receiving a subpoena um, and essentially drag his feet on that. And time will bring an end, uh, most likely, to the January 6th committee uh, w- with a with a likely Republican victory and taking back control of the House of Representatives. Mm-hmm. So that committee's work would essentially be done. Uh, that's why they were finishing up all of these public hearings and things with that sort of anticipation. Um, it's interesting because uh, a week or two ago, when the committee publicly voted at the end of that public hearing, unanimously to vote to hold the former president um, uh, to issue a subpoena, although that hadn't been issued yet. Uh, At the time, there was uh, reporting from The New York Times and elsewhere that Donald Trump was intrigued by the idea and was willing even to give testimony to be deposed by the committee as long as it was during a live appearance, essentially probably a televised Mm -hmm. live appearance, which, of course, it would be. Um, and so uh, that was, you know, that was the reporting at the time, although there are any number of legal um, experts and officials who would caution uh, anyone in that position, the former president, uh, against doing that kind of deposition. Right. But you could see why he would say, let's go live. I mean, it would be well, that, the, the greatest television viewing in the last and, 20 years. And that's the same part of him that caused him to call Bob Woodward how many times? Right. You exactly, know what I mean? Yeah. The tapes that were just released yesterday that just, yes. you know, I want to keep yeah. talking. I want to keep talking. But you know, if he's live, I mean, if the ratings are going to go through the roof, I would be fascinated by that. Wouldn't you? Sure, absolutely. And I think I think Donald Trump knows that. He knows that the country would be fascinated. A lot of people around the world would be tuning in mm-hmm. as well. But uh, it goes to the to the work of this committee as well in terms of not uh, them just requesting testimony, but they're also seeking additional documentation all surrounding the January 6th uh, events of a couple of years ago. And uh, that may be separate and apart from whatever the Justice Department ends up doing. Because you, you remember, even if you give a, a testimony and you are deposed, um, you know, giving sworn testimony to members of Congress, it is still not a courtroom legal setting in the sense uh, that we know, you know, courtroom dramas. Um, But the Justice Department is still considering how to handle um, any number of issues regarding Donald Trump, but this is one of them with the January 6th committee. Right. Well, certainly his plate is full with things that he has to juggle legally. Greg Clugston with us, SRN News White House correspondent. Uh, Greg, I just mentioned the Bob Woodward book, which I haven't read. It's called Rage, I think. Um, Mm -hmm. Or the audio book. Yeah, but, but yeah, just... Yesterday, he released the the tapes and the transcript of all of his mm-hmm. meetings uh, and all of his conversations with Donald Trump. Um, he there was a story that Jane Polly did on uh, CBS this morning yep. about it yesterday. So, um, is the I mean, as a journalist, first of all, can you ever see yourself like writing a book like that in the future? <laughs> if I got uh, if I got interviews like Bob Woodward, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, do what you, is it about Bob like... Woodward? He he can get just about anybody. Well, that he can. and you know he he made his you know he became famous what's forty five years ago or yeah, something easily. like that. Um, he's yeah. still doing Cast a long shadow. He's still doing it. Um, do you like his stuff? I mean, as a reporter, I bet you read that differently than John and I do. I, I do. I read it with fascination. Um, part of it, you know, is, you know, he he gets into the details. He talks to not only the principal players, but a lot of uh, the other people that work yeah. um, in and near administrations. He has done these kinds of in-depth interviews with Republican administrations, Democratic administrations. Uh, they often are scathing uh, results and reads um, because of people talking and, and, and explaining how things went down behind the scenes. And so, uh, yes, in terms of it being behind the scenes and getting a glimpse as to how different presidents and administrations work, I, I do find it very interesting. Very yes. much so. That's why we need the free press. Right. All right. Sure. One last question for you, Greg. It's not about the Washington Commanders, but I do. Are you excited to know what this is, John? Here it like comes. John's surprised. Um, today, uh, news comes to us that a kangaroo is on the loose in the state of Indiana. Mm. Uh, a man who had a permit to have an exotic pet. He has. He had two kangaroos. Mm. One has escaped, mm. and so there's. I was going to say a manhunt, but obviously it's the wrong word. A roo hunt. A, a roo hunt out. Um, if you could have any exotic pet, Greg Clugston, which would you choose? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, don't do well, that. Given... Yeah, I'm asking you next, John, so get ready. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, John's got time to think about it. Well, given the <laughs> fact that this is the first time that I think I've been ever asked about what exotic pet I might have, I might have to just default to the kangaroo mm. since uh, you just gave that story. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Is that a, is that an out? Well, is no, that a bad? No, well, first of all, it's a pretty cool pet. I would think so. I, I guess. So. Yeah, John? Well, I mean, the only way I'd have an exotic animal is if you had the space to have an exotic animal. And someone to take care of the exotic right. animal. So if I That's all included in this. If I lived like, you know, in a compound in Africa, I'd have an elephant. You Oh, that's a great... Okay, I, I mean, like that well, choice. How could you not want an elephant? Right. I would like uh, a Bengal tiger. No way. Don't yep. do that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I want that's what well, don't tell me what I want because oh, that's what right, I want, right, John. Right. I, mean, for I just think it's long. wrong. I just don't do that. Right? Well, well, I'm not saying it's right. Okay. I'm saying, you know, this is a little, this is a creative spark at the right. end of the conversation. I see a target with walking around with your animal. This Wait till you see what I dress up as for Halloween. Oh, good, great. Oh, that's coming up. Very nice. I considered a kangaroo this year, mm -hmm. but I turned it aside. Greg, good to see always you, Greg. a pleasure. Thank you so much for chatting. You're welcome. Ste Steeler fans might not like the Bengal. Just tell oh, them. Mm, Steeler painful. fans don't like anything right now. Not right now. Do you need new blinds or shades? Blindster.com offers custom-made blinds, shades, and shutters shipped directly to you at prices less than big box retailers. Blindster blinds are easy to install and guaranteed to fit. Don't overpay for new blinds. Shop today and save big. Blindster.com. Uncle Ryan, the news. We need a watchdog. A panic room. Because mortgage rates have gotten higher? But the news, Uncle Ryan. It's like the British are coming. Or worse. A birthday catastrophe. <laughs> can't say that word, catastrophe. It's Ryan from United Faith Mortgage, and yes, we're going heavy on the jokes to make a point. Mortgage rates are up, and no, it's not optimal for anyone. But there is another reality. Life does go on. Maybe you're ready for your first home, your dream home, or maybe it's time to downsize. Life goes on. Rates have been higher in the past, and good people still need new homes. The point we want to make is, if you buy a new home this year and you don't use our direct lender advantage, which can often save you monthly and lifelong money, along with us paying $1,000 of your closing costs, you'd be crazier than a watchdog in a panic room. See what we did there? We are United Faith Mortgage. United Mortgage Court, Melbourne, New York. And I'm number 1330. That's the Lady Department of Banking and Securities. Mortgage Lender License 22672. What if I told you you can save a baby's life for just $28? Well, it's true. Preborn is a ministry doing just that with the help of people like you by offering free ultrasound sessions to pregnant girls and women who otherwise might choose to end their pregnancy. We know that pregnant girls and women who can see their babies on ultrasound are far more likely to choose life. Your gift today can save babies' lives. Just $28 can give a mother the chance to see the truth of the baby that is growing inside her. $140 can do this for five girls and women. Whether you want to save one baby or five or hundreds, that opportunity is just a click or phone call away. Call 833-850-BABY. That's 833-850-2229. Or click on the preborn banner at wordfm.com. If you're with Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile, join the flood of people switching to Pure Talk. The average family saves over $800 a year by switching. Get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data for just $30 a month. Or if you still want unlimited data, you can get that and still save a fortune. Go to puretalk.com, type in your address to find the coverage at your home, then enter promo code half off, and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. That's puretalk.com, promo code half off. We are everywhere on your radio at 101.5 WORD FM Pittsburgh at wordfm.com, the Word FM mobile app, iHeart, TuneIn, and Odyssey. Tonight, we'll see partly cloudy skies. Expect a nighttime low of 49. Tomorrow will be warm with times of clouds and sun. We'll reach a high tomorrow of 74. Partly cloudy skies for tomorrow night. A shower in spots late with a low of 54. Mainly cloudy Wednesday with a bit of rain. We'll reach a high Wednesday of 63. With your AccuWeather forecast, I'm forecaster Drew Shannon. Of course, a celebrity is always a hot dumpster fire. Uh, and the latest to engage after a long stream of provocations 
is uh, Kanye West, who uh, is now known as Yee. And his uh, talent agency, CCA, uh, CAA, I should say, sorry, is the um, probably the preeminent talent agency in the world. They have decided to stop res- representing uh, Kanye West amid a growing call to boycott uh, the rapper. The agency ended its relationship with Yee this month following his recent anti-Semitic outburst in various interviews. CAA is the latest business to end its relationship with the rapper. Uh, other leading in, uh, in, in other leading figures who are saying goodbye to him are, um, include Endeavor, which is also a talent agency he's been involved with, uh, J.P. Morgan, Gap as well, and of course his, uh, his own design and uh, uh, shoe brand as well. Um, his outbursts have often been excused in part because of his, his struggles with what he says uh, are as a diagnosis of bipolar disorder. But uh, as I said, his, his uh, airings of anti-Semitic views in a string of interviews have made it nearly impossible for anyone to rally around him and say, we're still mm-hmm. with you. Uh, fashion brands, of course, uh, Def Jam, the record label, apparently is closing uh, as well. Um, he's been with these talent agencies, CAA, since 2016 and uh, Gap since 2012. Of course, he's close to being a billionaire. Uh, the he probably doesn't need a whole lot of, of endorsements at probably this point. Probably not. No, I, you know, uh, I think anybody who likes his music or liked his music, mm-hmm. it's a complex relationship, isn't it? Oh my gosh! Yeah, and he calls himself and, a believer, right? You know, from the beginning, because we talked about him doing the pop-up worship services, yeah. you know, when they were going on. And they're just really beautiful. They sure were. I mean, musically fabulous. The name just of Jesus really, was proclaimed yeah, in song. Really, really interesting thing he was doing. But from the start, you you know, we were all kind of worried, like, what kind of theological basis does he have? You know what I mean? Not, uh, we just didn't who's know. Who's pastor? Yeah, we didn't know. Who's, who's the person who's discipling him? Right. Um, and who's helping him to make his way through that because it's hard to understand what Christian life is when you enter into it for any person. And when you are a multi-jillionaire and in the public eye like he is, it's just there's a lot of pitfalls that are all around you. Right. I didn't, and I'm not a huge Kanye fan, but I didn't know about that there was an any anti-Semitism in his past. Yeah. Is that is there any evidence there of that? Is, yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I, so this is not a new thing. And this I is don't just... get it. I don't understand where or why that comes from, especially, you know, working in Hollywood or in the entertainment yeah, industry. Right. You're rubbing shoulders with a lot of people who are Jewish. Right. I mean, I'm sure many of his people around him are Jews who've helped build the empire no of kidding. which he is. No kidding. I, I don't get it. We live in very, very dangerous times. This rise of anti-Semitism in this world and it needs is to, shocking. And it's need, scary. And we need to speak out against it whenever, we, wherever we see it and whenever we see it. Anti-Semitism is wrong. It is. Totally and completely wrong. Yes. You think what this world would have learned from its mistakes. I know. How can... It, it's, I don't know. It's hard to believe that based on what we saw in the last century, that anybody would even tolerate a morsel of that in their thought process. I don't know. I I don't know where it comes from. Well, of course, it has you know to be where. a spiritual thing. It ha- there's no other explanation. The darkness. Yeah. Yeah. The the persecution of Jews to me it has to be a spiritual thing. How could how could one people group have been persecuted over so many centuries? Right. Well, I think a lot of it is largely comes from jealousy, where people think Jews they control the financial world. Okay, but why would Jews anyone control think that? entertainment? Right. right? That, you can easily see a majority of people working in banking maybe of Jewish descent or in entertainment of Jewish descent. I don't know what that means or why that is. But people have a hard time with well, that in some are, very sick ways. So there are a lot of Polish people who work in pierogi bakeries. I mean, like, I don't mean to... Yeah, but I banking don't, and entertainment are sources of power. Yeah, that's true. So you see that and they go, well, why is that? that that's, that's true, but I think it's an excuse. I think you could, whatever people group you are predisposed to dislike you can find something about that people group where you feel like they have power of other people yeah because every people group has power in one way or another but you go back centuries and centuries it's right? still i still think it's a spiritual thing i agree i believe yeah. that there is spiritual darkness involved is. in that right yeah but 
I mean, it's good that ye, well, that people like this have a conversation about Jewishness in this world right. and anti-Semitism because it's wrong. WORD. Dr. Charles Stanley. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. He says, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overpower it. Churches are not buildings. Churches are people. We are the saved saints of God. That's what the church is all about. The teaching of Dr. Charles Stanley on In Touch, helping you grow in Christ every day. Tomorrow morning at 8.30 on 101.5 WORD. Oil investments involve a high degree of risk. Actual results may vary. Oil keeps going up as the Russia conflict escalates. Get in on the next major oil boom now and help the U.S. with your patriotic investment that can potentially pay you monthly income for up to 20 or more years. That's the sound of a producing oil well and the sound of a smart investment. If you're an SEC accredited investor, you can take advantage of Encore Energy's projects. The U.S. government needs your investment in oil and is allowing you to write off nearly 100% of your investment in the first year. Goldman Goldman Sachs is projecting oil to go up to $100 a barrel. Call 800-287-6691. Call now and learn how to deduct 100% of your investment and create 20 or more years of potential monthly income. Call 800-287-6691. You'll be calling directly to the home office of Encore Energy. That's 800-287-6691. Charlie Dombeck here from Key City Capital. As a practicing CPA for nearly 30 years, I have found that 80% of your ability to grow your wealth is dependent upon two factors, taxes and investment performance. At Key City Capital, we improve investment performance by diversifying capital into off-market investment opportunities in passive rental real estate and alternatives like asset-backed lending. We recover dollars that clients unnecessarily pay in the form of income taxes, creating a lifetime annuity of savings. We are a sponsor of passive, affordable, single and multifamily residential rental investments, which are located in Sunbelt landlord friendly states. These investments are the top choices in a rising interest rate and inflationary environment. They represent a store of value protecting your capital from market volatility. Learn how we at Key City Capital can help you ultimately grow your wealth rapidly. Connect with me at keycitycapital.com or give me a call at 817-912-1569. Do you have a passion for helping others? Turn it into a rewarding career at Life Steps. Life Steps is hiring caring people to make a difference in the lives of individuals with disabilities. Full-time and part-time positions available with opportunities close to home. No degree or experience necessary. Life Steps offers flexible schedules, paid training, and generous benefits. Make a difference today. Call 724-283-1010 or visit lifesteps.net. Life Steps is an equal opportunity employer. After uh, this post row world that we live in now, there's been a lot of conversation of, well, you know, uh, Christians, they're real happy about the baby in the womb, but uh, of no use after the baby's born, which, of course, is a complete and total fallacy. It's just one of these, you know, sort of leftist uh, talking points. However, there is something about adoption that there is what people are leering in some ways. Well, I think from a woman's perspective, uh, adoption can be a more difficult option than abortion, or women think that the, it is. Why is that? You mean you bring the baby to term and then you say goodbye to the baby, the so, child? It's so emotional. Right. And so I think that's one of the things that has to be talked a lot about, really brought out in the open so that people can share honestly their you know experiences and perspectives on that. Charlie Camosi is back with us. Charlie's been a regular guest on our show over the years. He's professor of medical humanities at the Creighton University School of Medicine. He spent 14 years at Fordham University's theological theology department, author of seven books. His most recent book is called Bioethics for Nurses, A Christian Moral Vision. Charlie, welcome to the show. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on again. Charlie, as we're talking about adoption, we thought the best place to start would be to have you tell your own story, uh, the creation of your family. Tell us how it happened. <laughs> well, I wasn't prepared for that question, but I guess I could tell you about <laughs> that. We're trying um, to keep you off balance. <laughs> um, 
Well, about six and a half years ago, my wife and I, well, when we were, even when we were dating, I guess we were kind of a strange couple. We were already talking about the fact we wanted to adopt at a certain point. Um, but we ended up uh, um, adopting six and, a, or six and a half years ago um, a sibling group of three from the Philippines. Wow. Um, and it's just a, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we were going to have an adoptive part of our family no matter what, but we also happened to think we were infertile at the time, and I'm um, soothing the sick um, back of a four-year-old as we speak <laughs> who's an adopter who is a <laughs> who is a surprise biological child that came after this. Somebody yes. used to do a double-blind study of families who have uh, adopted and then have that biological happens. children they weren't expecting. But, um, but anyway, so yeah, and this is just the, the most wonderful, you know, thing, one of the most wonderful gifts we've we've experienced, and I couldn't, couldn't imagine our lives without these kids, Fabulous. for sure. So, Charlie, is it true that there is a stigma around adoption? Yeah, um, it's been well studied, and uh, or at least it's been studied. It, almost everyone agrees it exists. I was part of this working group um, at the Catholic University of America recently talking about adoption after Dobbs in particular. And one of the things that the pro-life movement really needs to focus on is on this, this stigma. And um, it's, it's, it needs more study, frankly, which is one of the things we're trying to figure out. If you know anybody that wants to fund a major study about <laughs> adoptive stigma, we'd love to hear from, from, from you. But, but basically, we do know some, some you know, key parts of it. Um, you've already touched on one big part of it is in many communities, there's a good thing, which is that women kind of with themselves and in their communities are kind of expected to, you know, kind of take responsibility, right? And, you know, this is my child. I'm not going to give my child over to somebody else, right, to, to take what is my responsibility, which is why, in a certain kind of perverse way, it makes sense that somebody would choose abortion over adoption because they don't have to deal with the fact that somebody, you know, is, is taking care of their child, is parenting their child, um, somewhere else so and those those kind of things get you know more and more um acute in certain kinds of communities it's especially true in the african-american community for instance so there's um we just have work to do in and things that are common sense but also um doing the actual studies and, and figuring out more about what's going on here mm-hmm. So in your own family, can you speak about that? When you're out and about with your family, and there you are, you have uh, three children from the Philippines and your own child, do people comment to you about your family? Uh, They do. (laughs) And sometimes they're pro-lifers, right? Um, My son's kind of giggling to me now when he hears hears your question. But um, (laughs) the... uh, the fact is that some of some of the people who would be most inclined to push back against the stigma use language like, "Oh, do you know who their real father is, or do you have, you know, contact with their real parents?" And what's so interesting is, again, many of these are pro-life Christians. There's such a dramatic, um, and this is one of the things we focused on at the panel at CUA. There's such a dramatic tradition in Christianity of thinking of adoptive parents as real parents, of right? Course, as, yes. as, as parents. I mean, um, Joseph, right, is the, is the uh, foster father or adoptive father of Christ in a very significant way. In fact, St. Augustine himself says that uh, Joseph was more a father of Christ than any of the people listening to his sermon mm-hmm. are a biological father of their own child. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, the spirit of adoption is one which all Christians have in terms of our Heavenly Father, right? Mm-hmm. And we're all brothers and sisters. And we've been, all, we, right, all of us Gentiles have been grafted in. That's what that's, right. God, that's what Paul calls it, right? So we're not we're not quote unquote natural children, <laughs> right? But we've been added to the family, welcomed in. Beautiful. That's well, very well said. Exactly. And so it's it's strange that that kind of language would be used. Um, I was just in an, in a debate at the um, Catholic Medical Association's annual meeting on embryo adoption. Uh, what to do with all the mm frozen embryos who are in the, over a million, actually, in the United States in cryogenic frozen storage. And um, I'm a strong proponent of ad- embryo adoption. There are some Catholics, though, because of the um, church's teaching on the connection between sex and procreation, say we can't adopt, we can't adopt those embryos because it would violate 
that. And they, they end up using language like, well, you know, adoption isn't real parenthood. You know, real parenthood comes from a kind of, you know, sexual procreation. And God, I just want to say, gosh, you guys know what you're saying to right. every adopted exactly. family out there. Right? Yeah. You know, it's just a bizarre kind of thing for the kind of culture we want to create, right? Which right. is again, very consistent with our already existing theological tradition. Right. No, wait, Charlie, go back. Are those one million frozen embryos, they're available in some form? Well, not not every single one, of course. But as many of your listeners know, in vitro fertilization often ends up with extra embryos, right? So you put the sperm in the ova, you know, in a, yeah. in a Petri dish and create a certain number of embryos. Sometimes you create, quote, unquote, extra embryos even intentionally, right? Because you may want to do it again. The process itself is very complicated. It doesn't always work. But then if you create, say, 10 embryos and you get one or two children out of it and that's all that you want, you have a question about what do you do with the quote-unquote extra embryos. You can Mm -hmm. keep them in frozen storage indefinitely, which is what a lot of people choose. You can have them used for research, which is what some people choose, or you could just discard them, which is also what some people choose. But for those that are in frozen storage, you know, it's even kind of grotesque to think about, but yeah. there's a question, can, can, can some of those be made available for adoption? And, and certain, certain parents will, will allow that option um, for, their, for their embryos. Fascinating. Wow. We're talking to Dr. Charlie Camosi. Uh, you can check out his latest book called uh, Bioethics for Nurses, A Christian Moral Vision. Uh, Charlie advises the Faith Outreach Office of the Humane Society of the U.S. also, and the Pro-Life Commission of the Archdiocese of New York. Um, so we, we only we have like a minute left, Charlie. Um, I guess I just want to ask you um, if you were talking to people who were either on the side of a, of a mom uh, who's unexpectedly pregnant and is considering adoption, or you were talking to a family who's looking to adopt, based on what you have lived through, would you recommend adoption to both parties? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> a million percent. I mean, mm. no, no parenthood is easy, of course, and if you're doing it with a partner, um, you know, there are challenges whether, and I've lived, we've lived this both biological and, and, and adoptive um, routes here. But my gosh, to, to, this is what Augustine was actually talking about. He said, when you choose to put yourself at the service of another in this particular way, you know, it's a, it's a whole different kind of ball game. And, and if you're choosing as an adopt, uh, you know, a parent who's giving their child up for adoption, that's maybe we need not to use that language, right? Giving your child up can maybe create stigma as well. But it was allowing others to have the gift of parenting your, your children. Mm-hmm. What a great gift, too. And in some ways, that's the more um, dramatic, mm-hmm. per, per, you know, the most dramatic part of themselves, right? And that's part of what we need to work on is as a culture, welcoming that kind of choice and honoring and, um, that kind of choice and honoring that kind of choice. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Charlie, our time is short and we're, we're sorry. Charlie, to, great that. to talk to you. Always. You always challenge us, Charlie. It's very, very interesting. Thank you so much. Uh, Charles Camosi, uh, do yourself a favor, please. Uh, look for Charlie online. Dr. Charles Camosi, C-A-M-O-S-Y, Charles Camosi. Of course, you'll find his books everywhere. Well done. Pumpkins, 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 and more pumpkins. Pumpkins are what the Springhouse is thinking about this time of year. Hi, it's me, Marcia, from the Springhouse, and we love sharing our farm with you during this beautiful time of year. We've got all kinds of fun planned for you and your family to be able to spend the whole day on our farm. Pumpkin patch hay rides, a petting zoo, giant square bale stack and pipes for sliding, a hay maze and a corn maze, pumpkin picking right out of the field, old time games under a tent up on the hill, and lots more. And when you get hungry, of course, we have great eats inside, too, with lots of pumpkin creations. Pumpkin pie, pumpkin cookies, pumpkin bread, pumpkin custard, and even pumpkin black bean chili. Every October Saturday features a family-friendly meal, and October Sundays feature our 4-H hog roast with all the fixins. Plan to spend a memory-making day on the farm at the Springhouse in 84 PA, 724-228-3339 or springhousemarket.com. The secret to the market beat stock pick strategy is so simple it is going to drive you crazy ask yourself is this current market making you sick logging into your brokerage account day after day only to see lots of red 
Well, let me tell you a secret. The best stocks to own are the companies that are consistently printing real profits year over year. The crazy thing is that it's even more effective in months like right now. Down markets means everything goes on sale, including these profit printing machines. Want to stop playing the loser's game and guessing what the next hot stock will be? Market Beat is about to text you our new report. Seven stocks to buy and hold forever. When you text the word profit to 68285, these companies print billions each year in profit and show no sign of slowing down. Get your free copy of seven stocks to buy and hold forever. Just text profit to 68285. Text the word profit to 68285. Don't wait. This report is only available for a limited time. Text the word profit to 68285. Standard message and data rates may apply. Please consult with your investment or tax professional. There's nothing like hearing the songs you love on local radio with no subscriptions and no monthly fees. But there's a new bill in Congress that could stop the music. If passed, this bill would tax your local radio station simply to play the music you love. Text LOCAL to 52886 and ask Congress to support local radio stations. Help us keep you connected to the music, local news, weather, and traffic that you need each day. This message furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters. What is a warrior? At Portersville Christian School, it's more than a team name. A warrior is taught to serve, to passionately model the love of Christ toward neighbor, community, and world. To learn as they cultivate academic excellence and a lifelong love of learning from kindergarten to senior year. And to lead through Christian character and integrity. Are you a warrior? Discover Portersville Christian School just 15 minutes north of Cranberry, where warriors are made at OurPCS.org. In what has become a familiar scene, two, quote, climate protesters, end quote, oh splattered a, a, a gooey substance on a famous painting, this time defacing a roughly $110 million Claude Monet painting in <laughs> Germany, God bless you, with mashed potatoes. As visitors milled around Bonet's grain stacks painting Sunday, a man and a woman in orange vests hurled containers of mashed potatoes onto the canvas, according to a video taken at the scene. Uh, we are in a climate catastrophe, uh, the uh, duo said. And um, my question is, uh, how do you get mashed potatoes into a, a museum? Yeah, I wondered about that. Right. So I, I see a video of these two people. They're wearing these orange vests. Okay. And then they glued their hands to the floor. People are starving. People are freezing. People are dying. Uh, we are in a climate catastrophe, they say. And um, people are still milling around where this painting is. Uh, uh, we're not worried about mashed potatoes. You know what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid because science tells us that we won't be able to feed our families in 2050. Science tells us that mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to feed our families in 2050. Right. What science are we talking about that's telling us we can't feed our families? In Does it take mashed potatoes on a painting to make you listen? So, uh, okay, so that audio that we were hearing in the background there, that's when the, the, the event the took place yesterday. of the mashed potatoes happened? Right, yeah. I don't know. I mean, you've been to the Carnegie Museum. You're not walking in with a bucket of mashed potatoes, are you? They're so careful about what you walk in with. So, I, I, I don't know. Look, I get it. What the, museum the, was this in? Uh, it's in Germany. It's okay. in, it was in Berlin. Okay. A clot, uh, let me see. Yeah, it is Berlin. <sighs> Points well taken. Okay, I, I know, I understand. Some people are very, very upset about the, the climate. Okay, so what? So this it just it, raises awareness. Look, it doesn't raise, raise awareness. It destroys we're talking something. About it. it destroys another it destroy beautiful the thing. Painting. It didn't destroy the painting. Okay. The painting was behind some sort of glass. Okay, what was damaged was the frame. Okay, good. It destroys the frame, which right. is also yeah. a thing of beauty. Right. Do you know anything about museum frames? You know they're not the kind of things that you slap 19th together. Nineteenth century pieces it's, of their work. It's not like they're well. doing them at Michaels. <laughs> no, they are not. For goodness sake. I think th that is re absolute, r such reductionist logic that because they think the earth is being destroyed, that I I'm going to get attention by ruining something else beautiful. Right. Now, me, if I was the, the people who ran the museum, once these people splattered this painting with mashed potatoes and then crazy glued their hands to the floor, I would say to them, well... Your latest art installation, mm -hmm. and you can stay there for as long as possible, perhaps, right? right. With your hand glued to the floor. Yeah, great. I mean, th th that's performance art, and people are big sure. on performance exactly. art, right? Exactly. So we want to embrace people's creativity, right? And honor the fact that they're trying to express themselves as you are currently, right?
But instead, I'm sure authorities came and applied something to remove the hand from the floor, and they were escorted out of the museum and most likely did not face any kind of charges, right? This is the world that we live in. Why? Because there's such there's such purity in their protest? I mean, I get out of here. Yeah. yeah. This is How about the, defacing a, a work of art? I wonder what the museum community how they yeah it's a good question how they gather and and talk about this because I'm I'm sure it will comes look the Carnegie's doing the international right now mm-hmm. right I mean we I don't know a whole heck of a lot about art right I know what either. I like I see beauty and think well that's interesting I, you know it's a nice way to spend a few hours walking around the museum mm-hmm. but what does that mean I. I Clearly, something is happening with the climate. Sure, but uh, th- there's, to me, zero connection between something happening to the climate and getting attention and this sort of right. ridiculous, like, vagrancy. It is vagrancy, yeah. Vandalism. Yeah, it's and, it's, well, and, and vagrancy if you're gluing your hands to the floor mm-hmm. of the museum. I would just let them stay where they are, right? It's performance art. Yeah, well, and people, I like your performance art People stop art by and go, okay, that's, I think that's great. That's kind of cool. All right, we come back. Uh, we're going to talk about quiet quitters and uh, the Blessing Board uh, launches a new collaboration to make home health care available to individuals at no cost. That's the 5 o'clock hour. 101.5 WORDFM Pittsburgh. On your smart speaker by saying, play the word Pittsburgh. And on your phone via the Word FM mobile app, iHeart, TuneIn, and Odyssey. Investments.com. With SRN News, I'm John Scott. A deadly school shooting in St. Louis. A 20-year-old gunman broke into a high school this morning, fatally shooting a woman and teenage girl and injuring six others before he was killed by police. A Michigan man pleads guilty to killing four at a school shooting last year. Is it your own choice to plead guilty? Yes, sir. 16-year-old Ethan Crumbly, who pleaded guilty to all 24 charges that included terrorism and first-degree murder in a Michigan school shooting that killed four students last November. Oakland County Assistant Prosecutor Mark Keast in court. He made the decision after substantial reflection to commit first-degree premeditated murder. A first-degree murder conviction typically brings an automatic life prison sentence in Michigan, but teens are entitled to a hearing at which their lawyer can argue for a shorter term. I'm Shelley Adler. This is SRN News. Trish heard one of our radio ads recently and gave us a yell. Ryan, she said, I keep hearing that mortgage interest rates are annoyingly up, but I'll keep it real. I'm struggling with bills. I haven't taken a vacation in years, and my back patio... Looks like Godzilla visited. And then, I keep hearing how much home values have gone up. Would it be wrong to pull that new cash out of my home to use for this stuff? It's Ryan from United Faith Mortgage. And yes, rates are annoyingly up. And so for some, it could be wrong to do a cash out refinance. But for others, the recent home value rush is still a once in a lifetime opportunity. Trish eliminated her credit card debt, turned the backyard into an oasis, and kept some money back for a vacation and rainy days. And her plan is, when these annoying rates settle back down, she'll refinance then to lower the rate. If you're curious what a cash-out refinance would look like for you, we are United United Faith Faith Mortgage. Mortgage. United Mortgage Court, Melbourne, New York. NMLS number 1330. Pennsylvania Department of Banking and Securities. Mortgage Lender License 22672. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, SelectQuote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, call Select Quote at 1 800 940 6161. That's 1 800 940 6161. Or go to SelectQuote.com. That's 1 800 940 6161. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. All of us come from somewhere. All of us have origin stories. From executive producer Larry Elder. Divine Providence was clearly operating in the lives of black Americans. And director Justin Malone. When I was growing up, we were never taught that America was bad. We were raised to love America. Comes the continuation of their 2020 hit film, 
Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom Part 2, An American Odyssey. Available on Salem Now. In those days, 10 men from all the nations will take hold of the garment of a Jew and say, we want to go with you for we know that God is with you. Join Messianic Jewish evangelist Rabbi Kurt Schneider as he shares authentic teaching from the Old and New Testaments, unfolding revelation today for your brighter tomorrow on Discovering the Jewish Jesus. Monday through Friday at 1.30 p.m. here on 101.5 Word FM. Tonight we'll see partly cloudy skies. Expect a nighttime low of 49. Tomorrow will be warm with times of clouds and sun. We'll reach a high tomorrow of 74. Partly cloudy skies for tomorrow night. A shower in spots late with a low of 54. Mainly cloudy Wednesday with a bit of rain. We'll reach a high Wednesday of 63. With your AccuWeather forecast, I'm forecaster Drew Shannon. Welcome to another edition of The Ride Home with John and Kathy, live from the Salem-Pittsburgh studios. And now here are your hosts, John Hall and Kathy Emmett. Greetings. Good afternoon to you. During the uh, 5 o'clock hour, I went and got myself a little bottle of uh, apple juice. I mean, who doesn't like it? Seriously, I haven't had apple juice since my kids were like seven years old. It, last time I had apple juice, it was in a sippy cup. <laughs> Right? That sippy cup's gross. Oh, I mean, they're ideal for kids. They're uh, gross. They yeah. smell. You can, yeah. No, they're all like chewed up they're and they're, really disgusting. I, I mean, that era of or that time of child rearing. Mm -hmm. It's there's, gr a, there's a lot of there gross is. things. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the diaper bag. Mm -hmm. I mean, all that stuff you're slopping around. Yeah. I remember, remember when, when the diaper genie was a thing. Oh. oh. If there's anything that could make diapers smell worse, it's the diaper genie. No. It was a bit of a godsend. You know that. I don't know if what, it did was. Did you do? Did you do disposables or did you do? Oh, did I did you, disposable diapers. Well, how many people, I thought you might have done like you know the diaper service. Yeah, I probably I mean, if I was a friend of the earth, I would have. Probably if I had to do it now, I might try that. We are the world. Do you remember that we are the children? Yep. We are the ones who make a brighter day. So let's start giving. I thought the diaper genie was a, a great invention. Yeah, but when you went to clean it out, it was oh, the worst smelling. Well, you take it outside and it like you know, hose it down. It with doesn't matter. Clorox like, and throw it in a different county. It was yeah. horrible. I mean, the crib, all that. Kids are messy and dirty, it's, and yeah. just I don't know. I'm glad it's over. <laughs> Me too. I love my kids. I but, know. Man, I you agree. Know. I'm but glad I, it's yeah, over. I'm having some apple juice, so that's good. Okay. Yeah. Um, quiet quitting. This has become a thing now, right? Yeah, which means that you're working, but you're giving minimal effort. Who does okay? that? So instead of just coming out and quitting, you're like kind Not, of showing up. Yeah, wait, our boss just like went, he, he's the last person in the oh, history yeah. of the workforce to oh, do my gosh. any quiet quitting. He's the quitting. opposite. Whatever the opposite of quiet quitting right, is, is yeah. what he's doing, which is not doing either one. Exactly. I'm thinking about changing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> After last week. Yeah, right. He's like last a mule. Six weeks. <laughs> Seriously. He's like a mule with a feed bag. He's just out there in the field all the time, up and down the field. There a he goes. A mule with a feed bag. <laughs> Yes. Really funny. Okay, nearly one third of workers describe themselves as engaged or enthused about work, while just under 20% describe themselves as actively disengaged, according to Gallup's survey. The rest are not engaged. <laughs> what? Who shows Wait. up for work? Okay, so what? So 50% of the American workforce. Not engaged. Is unengaged. Mm -hmm. People who do the minimum required and are psychologically detached from their jobs. The results are an about face from the summer of 2020 when U.S. worker engagement levels calculated by Gallup hit their highest levels at 40%. People under 35 reported the sharpest drop in lack of engagement. The data may help explain quiet quitting. This is from today's Wall Street Journal. Uh, quote, what we're seeing right now is a kind of a deterioration of the employee-employer relationship, says Jim Harder. He's a chief scientist for Gallup's workplace management. Managers are calling employees back to the office in an effort to reconnect. Yet those in-office requirements are among the biggest source of tension between bosses and employees. So they interview somebody, a woman, her name's Sarah Millard. She's 31, and she's upset with her. Her, 
her employer's insistence that she return to the office. Oh, that's so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> they have to actually go to work. That is. Uh, she was happy when changes her, everything. Yeah, <laughs> she said she was happy when her old employer in August of 21, 2021 started uh, letting people work remotely. But when the company called workers back to the office, she decided to rethink things in her life. <laughs> <laughs> Re- reassess think think. whether work was really for uh, her. I mean, rethink things. She's got a kid. You think that that alone would be the thing that made you reassess your life, right? I don't know. So this is why we can't, you know, when you go to a restaurant, the hours of operation are, are half of what they used to be. God bless right? those people. Or, you know, I just heard about this new app you can get at Home Depot, which is a map of the store. Oh, really? So that you can go in and like you you type in, you know. Thank goodness. I'd, be, I'd love to have. Okay, no, wait. Door hook. And it'll tell you what. What hap- Are these people just existing on what? I don't know. Maybe they're friends of John Fetterman. Maybe. I don't know. Or John Fetterman's parents. Everyone's got a little silver spoon in their mouth right now. I, I don't understand it. Uh, Gallup said workers who reported a, a lack of engagement cited a lack of clarity about expectations from uh, management. Um, seven in ten workers surveyed, well, 67% said they, exp- said they experienced stress at work at least weekly. <laughs> <laughs> That's One in seven feel they said they feel stressed at work every day. That's work. I was going to say work is stressful. Yeah. I mean, welcome to the world. I've, I felt a considerable amount of stress. Between I'm just me. waiting for the robots. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, right. right. And yeah. I'm going to hire one of those. Yep. I just want to say I feel a significant amount of stress between four and six weekdays. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. what in the world? I don't know. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, I... I don't know. Somebody asked me the other day at church uh, what happened to Christy and Little Mike. Little Mike? <laughs> <laughs> wow. New Mike turned into Little, little Mike. Mike. I like, well, I had to go into the details about Little Mike. <laughs> I'm texting him. He's going to be really disappointed in that. <laughs> All right. Oh, shall we step away? Yeah. Because I'm should. stressed. No, I'm are a you? little upset here. Are you stressed? Okay? Hey, let me just Why don't break- you quiet quit for the next three minutes <laughs> commercial break? All right. Coming up next, Global Links. The Blessing Board is launching a new collaborative. We'll talk about it next. It's a Monday edition. Post Steeler Loss. It's the loss edition of the Red. One hundred one point five W O R D. When it comes to our preconceived notions about what the Bible teaches concerning the law, you know, like the Ten Commandments, maybe we've mixed things up a bit. Here's Jen Wilkin. Grace good, law bad. But law proceeds from the heart of God, just as grace does. Delighting in and doing what God commands. Next time on Family Life Today with David Ann Wilson. Tomorrow morning at 9 on 101.5 Word FM WORD. Our world is getting crazier. The stakes are always getting higher and elections are right around the corner. Big days are ahead. But wouldn't it be nice to go back to the good old days? With Legacy Box, you can. Legacy Box transports you back to the glory days so you can rewatch and experience your family's past. Simpler times when the only thing that went TikTok was the clock. Legacy Box professionally digitizes your aging home movies, camcorder tapes, film reels, and photos, updating them to digital files that can't fade or be lost. Legacy Box is the safest and easiest way to save your family's captured memories. Legacy Box has been trusted by over 1 million American families. So digitize your memories with Legacy Box. Grab some popcorn and gather the family to revisit the good old days. Plus, for a limited time, we're offering a special election sale. Go to LegacyBox.com slash LBOX to get an incredible deal. Buy today to take advantage of this limited offer. Go to LegacyBox.com slash LBOX. LegacyBox.com slash LBOX. Are you ready to deepen your faith on a spectacular nine-day Mediterranean cruise? Join Alistair Begg in August 2023 to renew your vision, purpose, and connection with Christ as Alistair powerfully unpacks God's Word. Explore the biblical landscapes Paul encountered as he shared the gospel along breathtaking cliffside villages. 
Simply call 855-565-5519 or visit deeperfaithcruise.com for all the details. Marketing your business is hard. It's so competitive and getting new customers is as hard as keeping your existing ones. We know it because we're a local business too. So when it comes to marketing your business and getting new customers, we know how to do it. Our digital marketing firm, Salem Surround, is built to create customized solutions to your business, not your competitors, just you. Reach out to us at salemsurround.com and we'll work with you to create those solutions that will increase your business and bring you new customers. salemsurround.com. Research shows listeners prefer a personalized experience. So to help you remember, Liberty Mutual customizes your home insurance. We personalize this ad for Amber, who really misses boy bands from the 90s. Hey, girl. <laughs> I'm the cute one. Here to tell you how Liberty Mutual customizes your home insurance so you only pay for what you need. I'm the heartthrob. The only thing I love more than you is saving. And I'm the other boy in the band everyone forgot about. Just happy to be here. Only pay for what you need at LibertyMutual.com. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Angela Garcia is with us here to talk to us about the Blessing Board and a new collaboration to make home health care available to individuals in need at no cost. And uh, Angela, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much for having me. Angela, the home health care uh, situation has just absolutely I can't the the boom of it is so shocking of course post COVID during COVID and all of that but even before COVID came upon us there's such a need for it people are living longer um, people have all sorts of different medical needs and don't necessarily want to go into an assisted living situation don't necessarily have to go into an assisted living situation but they need something more than living alone so talk about how the blessing board has like kind of tracked this and decided to to deal with it Absolutely. So just to clarify, um, I'm the executive director of Global Links, a Pittsburgh-based nonprofit here in Pittsburgh that formed a partnership with the Blessing Board um, that we announced earlier this fall because of what you just mentioned, because of the need for home medical uh, devices and equipment. And so what Global Links has done for over 30 years is to really hone in on rescuing surplus from our healthcare system here in the United States to help vulnerable communities. And so there are rising numbers of those in need, the rising demographics of an older population here in Western Pennsylvania. Um, and like you said, living longer. If we can help our neighbors, regardless of their ability to pay, live longer and healthier and safely in their homes, it's better for everyone. So whereas Global Links is set up to work uh, with hospitals and senior care facilities in, in large volume. And we have 30 years of working to respond internationally. When we started a local program here in Western Pennsylvania about six or seven years ago, we needed someone we could work with that could interface really to be that, that distribution partner, the one that could support our local community um, if we could get the materials. Um, and that's where the Blessing Board, which has been expanding in Western Pennsylvania, uh, where they, they came into the picture and we started talking with them a couple years ago uh, before, before the pandemic. And uh, they are set up to provide uh, home furnishings uh, for people that can maybe not afford to furnish their homes, so our lowest income neighbors. And so it was really an interesting conversation their organization had to see if they could take on this new role of helping those who need items to walk, to bathe, to you know reduce the risk of falling in their homes but couldn't afford it. And um, it's been a wonderful uh, evolution of the conversation, and that was what we were happy to announce, the partnership to serve Western PA neighbors is now live as of last month. Wonderful. So, Angela, a, a friend of mine used the Blessing Board a few years ago. He was um, he was moving into a um, sort of a senior situation and re really, you know, just kind of wanted to, uh, uh, needed some help, I, w I should say. And so went to the Blessing Board, made an appointment, and was able to get, you know, some a, a couch, a, a little dining room table and whatnot for no charge. I mean, this was a, a, it was a true blessing for him. So now you're saying with Global Links, you're providing healthcare equipment 
Um, exactly. That is in the same mold as the blessing board. And it, it, you're making an appointment, essentially. Is there a screening process? Talk to us about how people go about this and, and essentially what's available. Sure. So there's there's two sides of this equation, and that's why we needed a partnership. Right? There are families here in Western Pennsylvania, not really all around the country, that, you know, have loved ones that may need a, I call them those shopping walkers, right, those roller heater sure. walkers to help them be part of the community yeah. and, and to do their own chores or bathing benches or shower stools that, you know, prevent a fall in when people are bathing themselves. And if we can afford those, we are absolutely going to get them for our family members. But if you no longer need one or if needs change or a family member moves into a care facility, that's where Global Links is able to rescue or receive those items as donation. Whereas the Blessing Board will deliver to them and then they will take, yes, calls or appointments. You can go to theblessingboard.org um, or to globallinks.org. We've connected all the information there. If people need one of those items, because the items I mentioned and several others are not covered by most Medicaid plans or insurance plans. So that's where if someone is on a limited income or a low income and can't afford these really, really basic items to keep people safe, right, and dignified yes. and, and ability to maintain their quality of life and that of their families because the caregiver has a lot of stress if they don't have the items to, you know, a transport wheelchair, these lightweight things that make the care just tremendously easier. Um, since it's not covered, they can call the Blessing Board and request an appointment. There is no form. There is no proof of income necessary. Um, and the Blessing Board staff have two locations, one in Shaler, right off of Route 8, and another one in the South Hills um, near the county airport mm -hmm. in West Eflin. And they can schedule an appointment and talk with their staff about what those needs are. So those that have it, if your listeners, you know, what a lot of people don't realize is here in Western Pennsylvania, it's unique. There are, we have eight different points set up from Erie to um, Squirrel Hill in the city to the East End um, and Mercer County. There are different spaces that people can drop off items they no longer need so that we can get them to other neighbors that can't afford them. I love it so much. That's fabulous. Uh, we're talking with Angela Garcia, Executive Director of Global Links. I mean, Angela, I, I, again, I, I know someone who uses what you, you described it sort of like as a, a rolling shopper thing. I mean, they, they, they're they lightweight. Um, mm -hmm. They also have like a little handbrake on them, right? And, yes, it, and it does exactly. provide, you know, the ability for people, instead of using a walker, which is sort of cumbersome and slow, I mean, my friend is not like he's running, but, you know, he's kind of scooting around there pretty good. I would imagine those things are, you know, they're a little pricey, uh, brand new. They are. They can cost several hundred dollars. Um, some of them, you know, that get the basket or the, the, the seat. People will often see waiting for the bus stop or for their access van or, you know, or their family member. They have a little seat on them. But uh, a couple hundred dollars, mm -hmm. if you're on that limited income, is, is a lot of meals. <laughs> yeah. It is a lot of utility bills. Um, and so that's why we want to, you know, we really appreciate people getting the word out that, if you do, you know, unfortunately have the loss of a loved one that had these items, we can continue their legacy and honor their memory and donate them as surplus to any of the collection sites in Western Pennsylvania. And those will then stay here to help our, our own neighbors. I think some people, when they hear Global Links, they think it's all going internationally. But um, we started this home care surplus rescue specifically because we saw um, through our own personal experiences, being blessed with wonderful grandparents and aunties and neighbors that, that cared for us and saw the difference, really, in, in how those items, like you said, you can scoot around with a lot more dignity mm -hmm. and maintain people's independence, which really, you know, we saw that and we want to honor that. And really, just because someone shouldn't, can't afford it, they shouldn't be denied that in their in their senior years. So that's what we're trying to do I through partnership it. and collaboration, which Pittsburgh is is blessed with tenfold. Fabulous! I love it. So Find much. out more about all of this at globallinks.org. That's G L O B A L L I N K S. There's two L's in there. Dot O R G. You can uh, donate. Right there, there's a portal there. Uh, you can find a way to contact um, Global Links and get more information. Angela Garcia, thanks for being with us today. 
Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, pleasure is ours. This is really great. It right? is. It's a wonderful thing. To be a recipient or to give, I mean, both people are blessed on that. The Blessing Board and Global Links, helping people live a life of mobility and dignity. Amen. Nothing in this world beats real life experience. Now, of course, a lot of us have sent our kids to college. There's a lot of classroom work and theory and whatnot, but then hopefully there's a day where the rubber hits the road mm -hmm. and your kid goes out and spreads wings and becomes part of the real life environment of what it is to earn a living. And prior to that, the internship is what gets you ready, right? That's the time when you're like kind of in the work world, but not fully in the work world, right? And you're kind of trying to test your wings and ask the questions and get some guidance and maybe perform well enough that you could get somebody's attention later on and maybe get a job. Right. Now, at Grove City College, the opportunity for internships exists, mm -hmm. and people cement themselves inside of a, a corporation, and once you graduate, then, I mean, the possibilities are endless. On campus, people come to Grove City and go, we know the nature, the quality mm -hmm. of these students. This is an A+. Plus. We're invested in these students because we see what you produce. Count us in as corporate partners. So if that sounds interesting to you or something that might be appealing and a great thing for your child to strive for, consider Grove City College. Look them up online, gcc.edu. That's Grove City College. I love seeing a transformation of a smile. There's a reason patients love Dr. Megan Stock, voted Pittsburgh Trib's best of the best dentist in Northern Allegheny County for the second year in a row. You don't have to do full mouth rehabilitation to really transform a patient's life for a patient to be able to smile confidently and be happy with their own smile. Exceptional dentistry meets compassionate care. Stock Family Dentistry, Perry Highway in Wexford at StockFamilyDentistry.com. Hello, this is John Guest. We would like to invite you to a citywide prayer gathering at Christ Church at Grove Farm, Thursday, October the 27th, 6.30 to 8 in the evening, to pray together for the next midterm election, that candidates will be elected who will stand for biblical values and that Christians will get out and vote in what will be a monumentally critical election. This is John Guest. Go for it. Listen on your smart speaker at wordfm.com, the Word FM app, iHeart, TuneIn, and on Odyssey. In your car or at home, too, at 101.5 WORDFM, Pittsburgh. Morning, Mama. How you feeling? Great, and I'm ready for you today. I'm checking in on you. Morning meditation? Check. Dressed and ready to work out? Check. Check your blood pressure yet? And check. Boom. Great job, Mom. And about those gold earrings. No, ma'am. Now more than ever, it's important that we protect our hearts and the hearts of those we love. Monitor your blood pressure daily and help each other stay motivated. Rally your squad to take the online pledge at releasethepressure.org. Brought to you by the Release the Pressure Coalition and the Ad Council. Tonight we'll see partly cloudy skies. Expect a nighttime low of 49. Tomorrow will be warm with times of clouds and sun. We'll reach a high tomorrow of 74. Partly cloudy skies for tomorrow night. A shower in spots late with a low of 54. Mainly cloudy Wednesday with a bit of rain. We'll reach a high Wednesday of 63. With your AccuWeather forecast, I'm forecaster Drew Shannon. sense does what make sense <laughs> the radish you're saying the radish mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the radish yeah the radish makes perfect sense I love a radish you like a rat I love a radish <laughs> tell me about that well what do you do with that you cut it very very thin, thinly right and you put it on your salad Oh, and you put on your salad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the taste is really unusual. Yeah, exactly, which is why I've brought it up for Does This Make Sense? It's got a bite. Yeah, it's not friendly. What do you mean it's not friendly? Yeah, I think what? you have to be a professional. What? Like, to ingest when it? I was a kid, it was the worst thing in the world. Really? Oh, when I was a kid, I thought that is just an, a an, an evil vegetable. Now yeah. that I'm more mature, more open-minded, I feel like I'm able to tolerate it, but only on avocado toast. When it's very delicious. Not on a salad. 
I do not like it in a salad. Really? I like a salad. Like, with, with a radish? Yeah. What else do you do with a radish? That's about it. Okay. <laughs> So it makes limited sense. Well, I'm, I'm sure there's much more. Maybe it's just I'm the one who's limited in my love of the radish, but I do like it. They're just it's a it's an unusual, like I said, in a very unusual taste. Is it something you had as a child growing up? Yes. Mm -hmm. Really, you mm -hmm. were subjected to the radish or or welcomed into it. I or did what? welcome. I welcomed the yeah. Really, see, see a radish and go yeah. I had it when I was a child, mm -hmm. and I thought it was a punishment of a sort. Really, I, I would never ever ever eat one. <laughs> Well, I just you know one thing. When you see like a, a bunch of radishes, they're beautiful. They are gorgeous. And you think that they're going to be a lot better than they are. They are. No, you, I think you just maybe you've been scarred somehow. I, okay, well, that's why I asked the yeah. question. Does it make sense? And I so think you've you, answered in the affirmative. You have multiple cookbooks. You should look at your radish recipes, perhaps. Well, there right? aren't very many. Oh, there has to no, be. Well, I mean, no, I'm not saying there aren't any. All right. But I don't think there are a whole lot. All right, does this make sense? Hmm? A leaf blower. A leaf blower. Get I, out of here. That's the dumbest thing. I mean, you see guys out there. Wah, Just blow them into somebody wah, else's yard. Wah. How about a rake? I don't think I'd ever. I'm, many things I, I desire, like, you know, oh, that, that, I'd like to have that. Yeah. But a leaf blower? Never. Unless I had, unless you had no shoulders, right? Unless you, you lost your shoulder action. A rake is superior in every way to mm -hmm. a leaf blower. I don't get it. You know what I think of when I see someone with a leaf blower? Mm. It's like the jet ski of the garden world. <laughs> like it's just annoying. <laughs> it's loud. Yeah. And there are other ways to accomplish that. People love them, though. My neighbors, they're out there. Saturday morning at 830. That doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. And the sense. radish? Makes perfect sense. I mean. Perfect sense. In limited application. Have a radish and enjoy. 101.5 WORD. What happens when you open God's Word every day? I'm Alan Jackson, and I have the privilege of joining you every weekday here on the radio. I see the transforming effect of God's Word daily. Lives are changed because His Word gives us insight for the challenges we face and encouragement in our walk with the Lord. Join me, and let's see what God has in store for us today. A fresh look at Scripture, weekday mornings at 930, Alan Jackson Ministries on 101.5 WORD. If you are 65 or older, you know this. It's really frustrating to deal with out-of-pocket medical expenses, just watching your hard-earned dollars flying out the window. Well, here's something that can really help, and it's worth taking a minute to look into. MediShare has a new option. It's called MediShare 65 Plus. And MediShare is a community of Christians who share each other's health care bills. It really is a community, too. People encourage and pray for each other. MediShare 65 Plus is a low-cost option for those with Medicare Parts A and B, and it fills in the gaps where Medicare stops. It's a great way to fight inflation, too. You can lock in one low monthly price for up to 10 years, and you can use your Medicare-approved doctor, and you also get telehealth 24-7 service, so you don't have to leave your home for the little stuff. Very worth looking into, and it's so easy to find out why people rave about the customer service at MediShare. They're easy to talk to. Call 833-SHARE. 55. That's 833-SHARE-55. 833-SHARE-55. You were created for a purpose. Geneva College can help you find it, follow it, and fulfill it. As you boldly answer God's call to live faithfully and intentionally in service to others, together with Geneva, you'll embark on a journey of discovery with professors and peers who are integrating faith and learning, thinking constructively and creatively as you learn to understand your world, develop expertise in your field of study, and find meaning and purpose in your life's work. Ranked one of the best value schools in regional universities north by U.S. News and World Report, Geneva offers over 195 undergraduate majors and programs to help you discover the compelling significance of God's calling. Geneva College, you were made for this. Explore what interests you at geneva.edu slash academics. My heart was racing just making spaghetti. I could have waited to tell my doctor, but I didn't wait. I was short of breath just reading a book. I could have delayed telling my doctor, but I didn't wait. 
They told their doctors and found out they have atrial fibrillation, a condition which makes it about five times more likely to have a stroke. If you have one or more of these symptoms, irregular heartbeat, heart racing, chest pain, shortness of breath, fatigue, or lightheadedness, this is no time to wait. Contact your doctor. Brought to you by Bristol-Myers Squibb and Pfizer. Of all the shows that have premiered in the <laughs> in the last couple of years, yeah. um, and there have been a lot. Again, we've talked about how this is the golden age of television. Avalanche. I mean, there's just so many, many good things. Mm-hmm. Um, I think my two favorite. Sh- well, my two favorite shows are All Creatures Great and Small, mm-hmm. uh, which I re- well, okay, three three favorite shows. <laughs> <laughs> Only Murders in the Building. Mm-hmm. And Ted Lasso. Mm-hmm. Ted Lasso. I've seen season one of Ted Lasso. Okay. Season two is different. Mm-hmm. Um, I think season one is superior, but... I love season one. It's so... The, the it's, character of Ted Lasso. It's un, It's totally unexpected in its kindness and generosity. It really is. I mean, the guy it just exudes joy and empathy. He's, he's an everyman who you would want to be. I almost feel like it's the perfect season. Season one. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I really do. I feel like I was a little disappointed with season two, and I think it's probably because season Mm -hmm. one was so outstanding. outstanding. Now, they both won Emmy, the Emmy for the best comedy. Season one and two. Season one and two. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, good. Um, So it's not like the quality goes down. It's just different. But anyway, um, Ted Lasso's mustache Jason Sudeikis. Yeah, uh, Sudeikis. Sudeikis, yeah. His mustache goes before him. Kind of like the Magnum P.I. mustache goes before Tom Selleck. Or Ned Flanders in the cartoon world. Oh, is he from The Simpsons? Yes, he is. You don't know Ned Flanders. I didn't really watch The Simpsons. He's my favorite, like, sort of... I love The Simpsons. Yeah. I I feel kind of badly I never got into that. He's fabulous. I mean, he is a Christian, you know, Ned Flanders. And that Mm. mustache, sort of, as you said, it's a broom. It goes before him. I like a mustache. Do you like a mustache? Not really. What? I like a mustache with a beard. But not a standalone? No, I really don't. Huh. I've had mustaches. Have you? I, be- I believe that. I, I have a. You've I- seen me in a mustache. <laughs> yeah, that was short-lived, and I think I was glad about it. <clears throat> well, look, so like a lot of men with facial hair, because you know you have limited... Guys are pretty much static. You think what, what? What can we do? What can you? You know what can you make up there? Now sure. for a while there, I was like you know pretty much chameleon esque esque, that I would grow a beard, shave it, do a little mustache for a while. Sometimes I had a little goatee sure. thing going mm-hmm. on there. But there was a time where um, I had, a, I had a, a beard, and one morning I woke up and I thought, oh, it's springtime. I'm gonna I'm gonna let let that beard go, and. Um, so I started shaving the beard off, and I was like, oh, well, that looks kind of crazy. That mustache there, I think I'll keep the mustache. Was it like a hardy one? It was. Okay. Yeah. And um, then, as I was getting <laughs> getting dressed, I thought, well, there's a staff meeting this morning. I'll, oh. <laughs> I'll surprise everyone <laughs> right. with a new mustache look. And my friend Diane gave me a shirt. Mm-hmm. Which, For your birthday. Mm-hmm. Which was unusual. It was in its coloring. It was pink. Extremely oh, that so. One. Yeah, it yeah. was it was pink, and there was a gigantic <laughs> polo horse on it. Right, right. a Ralph Lauren thing. That was your Grand Marshal of the Dork Parade yeah. <laughs> outfit, wasn't it? It was yeah, pretty much, pretty so. much. And so then I, I, there I am, you know, walking into the staff meeting. There were probably twenty people Wednesday or so. Wednesday at nine. Yep, Wednesday at nine. I walk in with my new mustache and my new pink shirt with a gigantic polo horse on it, thinking, "Ha ha ha! Look, who's there? Management." From California. <laughs> oh boy. Woo-hoo. Yeah. Oh boy. Management from California, and I'm like all sporty. I'm like, you know. Uh, that was the last time. That may have been the last time I had a mustache. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, I like a mustache. I have a photograph of that 
that exact moment. I, and I probably was in jest. I was making fun of myself, right? In the photograph? Yeah, I think I am. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I knew that. I I mean, the whole thing was like meant I'm, as a I'm joke. I'm now consumed with, with, you know, sometime over the next 20 minutes, right. I have to figure that we'll find that. But, I, I mean, mustaches come and go, right? So the the, um, the Ted Lasso mustache is, is sort of become iconic in a It way. has. Like and Magnum P.I. Yeah, and it's it's it seems like it's bringing the mustache back mm -hmm. almost single-handedly. My kid, my, my uh, 21-year-old son, has a mustache and it's I like it because you know it, you see your kid in a different light yeah it wouldn't be my style right he's kind of you know I don't know he's sporting something there sure it's something right I'm not going to say boo about it right he's, he's doing his thing right mm -hmm. but that's the only kind of like for men that's like the true kind of like fashion thing okay all right let me bring up somebody else who has a who to me I associate with the mustache okay Kevin Klein. Oh, why Kevin Klein? I think of him in a mustache because that's what he had when he was in my very favorite Kevin Klein film, which is French Kiss with Meg Ryan. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. He had a mustache in that. He his character, <clears throat> as you can imagine, was wonderful and hilarious. Did you see The Big Chill? I never did see The oh, Big Chill. Oh, what a great movie! Anyway, it's Kevin Klein's birthday today. Is it? Yes, it is. I just saw Kevin Klein in a movie. What did you see? With Sigourney Weaver. Oh, that's the one he a fish called Wanda. No, no, no. Uh, it's brand new. It's a brand, it's in theaters now. We saw it last week, my wife and I. I think it's called The Good House. Okay. I think it's called The Good House. How was that? We loved it. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's a it's for a person of a certain age, but there's <laughs> there's a romance between Sigourney Weaver and Kevin Klein. Okay. And Kevin Klein, what's interesting because Kevin Klein, you know, what. Well, uh, um, what is he? The um, you know what the iconic movie? Uh, my name is. Um, oh, he was he wasn't in Princess Bride. Was he in Princess Bride? I think he was. Is he the one he? who was in it? Yeah. Um, I think he is. My name was Inigo Montoya. Yeah, Montoya. So, yeah. Is that him? Predator die. No, that was uh, no, that no. wasn't. I'm sorry. Yeah, that wasn't him, was it? No. Um, anyway, okay, so I said I got off the track here. Um, Kevin Klein. Um, he did win the Academy Award for Fish Called Wanda. Did he, though? Yes, he did. He also won three Tonys. Mm -hmm. His debut was in Sophie's Choice, Bill. which was in 82, which I ne movie, I've never seen. You've that. never seen? I've never. I want everyone why? to know. Why that would I movie, see? I would. I you could, need to see that movie. No, I'm never You're seeing it. You're crazy not to see I, it. I read the book. It, it was so traumatic. It made me weep. Of course it did. Oh, that movie. Of course That's, it did. And she's fabulous. Of course she is. Okay. Uh, Silverado, Cry Freedom, Grand Canyon, Dave, which was great. Remember oh, he's yeah, president sure. of the United he's States? President. Yeah, A French Kiss, which I mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, the Ice Storm, In and Out, Wild Wild West, mm -hmm. Life as a House, The Conspirator, My Old Lady, Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. Also, Hunchback of Notre Dame. Listen, before all that, Kevin Klein was a massive Broadway star. Three Tonys. Yeah, he's a gigantic. I Won mean, a Tony for Pirates of Penzance. Uh, Penzance With Linda uh, Hen Ronstadt. Henry the mm Fourth, -hmm. and also uh, Noel Coward's Present Laughter. Right, is someone like you know as an actor, he was someone who was easy to hate because you go, oh that guy. I mean, he's like he had every gift imaginable. Well, he also got a, a uh, scholarship to Juilliard. Right, he had an incredible voice. He could do Shakespeare. He could do comedy. He could do drama. I mean, there was nothing the guy couldn't do. And now this this film, he plays against type, where he plays an old sort of um, contractor in a small town in Maine, and um, no, it's not Maine. It's like it's a small sort of like seaside town. Okay. And um, he's kind of like frumpy, kind of, but still very Kevin Kleinish, charming. Charming, very yeah, I was, charming. I was say, he has to be charming. Yeah. Have you ever seen French Kiss? No. Meg Ryan. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. What about you know he stars in Bob's Burgers? Oh. Did you know that? No, I did not know. Yeah. I love Bob's Burgers. Mm -hmm. What? He's Bob. He earned a primetime Emmy for, for Bob. Uh huh. For the Bob's Burgers movie. That's a funny. Listen, have you ever seen no, that show? No, I've never seen I it. I love that show. That's a really great family show. A really great family show. It's on Hulu. Yeah, are you? I bet you're super excited to know that he's actually the one in it. Or I one am. of the now ones that I in knew, it. I did not know that, huh? I mean, that's great That's great voice acting. Yeah, Kevin Klein. Okay, how old do you think he is today? Oh, today's his birthday. Yes. <clears throat> he's up there. <laughs> he's getting there. Is he getting there? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, well, I, I would say Kevin Klein... 
uh, firmly ensconced in his 70s. Firmly ensconced? Mm-hmm. Uh, 74. Five. Seven, very five. good, very John. Good, very, good. very, very good. Excellent, Kevin Klein. Happy birthday. Yeah. Very nice. So you and your excellent Kevin birthday. Klein still lives in on the Upper East Side, I believe. Mm, Did wouldn't? you ever run into him when you never, were in Never in a million Manhattan, years. Never. And I would have been very, very happy to, to be next Me too. To He's been married to his wife since 1983. Has he? Do you know Phoebe Cates, his wife? Oh, sure. Did you know that? She's they were a fine married? actor. I did not know that yeah. either. See? See, that's why Didn't you invite me into this I did. Thank little you. adventure. All right, are we out of here or no? We no, we got, no, we have more stuff to oh, do. Oh, that's right. This is long. Yeah, okay. So let me switch uh, tacks a little bit. Uh, okay. Bono has a new book out. Right. Now, I'm a big U2 fan, and I very much enjoy Bono's writing. Is this Bono's first book? Or he's written well, other this books? is like an autobiography, as I, understand, really? Really? as I understand it. I don't know much about the book, so but I know he has penned it. The other books that I've read are more... There are books about him. Okay, yeah, but sure. But if you're a fan of U2, you're reading his writing all the time right. because he writes the lyrics for the band. Right. So uh, what's uh, when's the last time that U2 um, released something? Uh, they just had a new song out in the last really? six months. How old's Bono? I have no idea how old Bono is. Uh, Bono is would probably 68? be no. I would say 64. 64. That's my estimate. I could look that okay. up. Anyway, are um, they? Done? Are they? No, I guess they're not done. Are they, they just yeah. released a new album. It's a new they're song. Not done. Well, I mean, you know what I mean. I mean, they're not. Are they well, they're, done? They're not the cultural force that they once were. Well, right? They weren't. They're not. Well, no, no. He's you know? sixty-two. Okay. Um. I mean, you know, but there was a time. I mean, well, we saw them. We saw them. We we did. We saw them together. Yeah, yeah. We didn't mean to be there together, no, but, but we just were, like everything we were right else, there. we still end up being there together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to a concert. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go too. Though you were three rows in front of me. How the heck that happen? There's 60,000 people there. You're like three rows away. That was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. That was absolutely ridiculous. I was all excited because you like bought your tickets like six months in advance, and I bought them like the day before. <laughs> <laughs> that figures. I loved it. it. That, I is, that is so I emblematic. Scooted, I scooted right in there. That is super happy. That is so emblematic. Mm-hmm. Anyway, in April of this year, Bonner received the Fulbright Prize for International Understanding for his uh, activist efforts. International Understanding. That's mm-hmm. a prize. Wouldn't that be a nice prize? Yeah, the Fulbright Prize for International Understanding. You know who will never give me that prize? Who? My wife. <laughs> Because <laughs> you don't understand her. Come so on, what's sure. going on there, Johnny? You know, hey, honey, I won the like. Cause if Bono's wife, she can never complain now because he said, "I won the prize for understanding." Right. You know. I remember reading uh, an interview with her, uh, and she was Mrs. Bono. Yeah, and she it was actually with both of them, and she was talking about her favorite, <laughs> her favorite band is the Fray. Oh, okay. really? Yeah. yeah. No, not and you, so she, too. No. And she's just talking on and on and on about the band. And there's this silence, and Bono says, I have a band. <laughs> Doesn't matter. No. She didn't care about his band. That's fascinating. Mrs. Bono. Anyway, so Bono said, according to Business Insider, um, some things about, you know, he's talking about the myriad of famous celebrities that he's come in contact mm, opportunities with. Opportunities that he's rubbed shoulders with, yeah. right? Yeah, okay, so I see this uh, business insider. Um, Steve Jobs, according to Bono, never locked the front door of his, quote, low-key, end quote, Tudor-style house in Palo Alto. Uh, Bono said he went to uh, visit Jobs in California in 2004 to uh, talk about his... Um, uh, maybe they were going to be in a commercial, right? That just, Apple was going to do a commercial. Mm-hmm. And so he said, we went into the house, and uh, there's Steve with his wife and their three kids in this low-key Tudor-style house on a street. Um, he said, the Anglophile also inspired a cottage garden full of wildflowers mm-hmm. that you could eat as you walked into the house with a gate opening yards from a front door that he apparently never locked. Um, he said, uh, this is Walter Ike, Walter Ikeson, uh, who's Job's autobiographer, says also that uh, Steve Jobs uh, usually kept the back door unlocked and did not have a security fence. He didn't also have he never had security guards or live in help or a driver. He liked to take care of himself. Now the house, low-key tutor. I was going to ask about that. Five thousand seven hundred square foot. Oh my God, seven bedrooms. He lived in the property until he passed away uh, from cancer in 2011. The property was built in the 1930s, made was uh, was made from brick and slate. A former neighbor called it a lovely and soul-soothing cottage. Mm. Uh, that sounds pretty nice, doesn't it? Yeah. 
uh, it's, it had a distinct, Bono says it had a distinct uh, 1960s flavor. Sounds pretty darn nice. Can you imagine, what's that conversation? I wonder what it's like when people like that get together. I mean, Steve Jobs, known around the world. Bono, known around the world. Right. Bono, I wonder I wonder what his, what his um, interaction with, with people that were, were known non-believers and Bono's willingness to engage in a conversation about Christ. I yeah. wonder what that would be like. I wonder if he talks about this in this new book. I'm going to book him. He's going to join us next week. We'll get Bono me, on the air. I would love to do that. Well, remember when he, uh, when our friend David O. Taylor yes. uh, did the, and, the video thing with Bono and Eugene Peterson? Yes. I thought... Oh, that, that was, was fascinating. Fabulous. You can watch it on YouTube right now. It's really wonderful. So humble. Now, Bono's obviously much more well known than Eugene Peterson mm-hmm. was. But Bono loved but, it. But yeah, I mean that was a that was an interesting thing to see kind of how they connected. So how I don't know. I mean, they're all people. They're just regular people. Yeah. But sure. they have such an incredibly La- large reach, and I think it would be f- it could be frustrating to be an international celebrity, and whoever you meet already feels like they know you. Right. But do you get nervous around uh, when you meet people like that? I've never met and I mean I've never met an international Who's the most like famous that? person you've ever met? Anybody big? I can't really think of anybody. Any any huge celebrity that I've met? I don't think so. Chili Billy? <laughs> I never met Chili Billy. Hmm. No, you never never met anybody famous. No one? You never met anybody. Amy Grant. Amy Grant. Oh, well, I've met Amy a bunch of times. Yeah. Do you get nervous? Guess. No. Yeah, because she's a person. She's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've met a bunch of people through work here. Yeah. But I don't know. I just, and I, maybe I have met famous people that aren't coming to my mind. Yeah, right. I mean, people are people, right? Well, okay. I mean, you're the one who you were the bartender. Him. You were the bartender for Elizabeth Taylor's birthday party. Malcolm right? Forbes. I was Malcolm <laughs> Forbes' personal bartender. Yeah, and I met That's all kind lot. of crazy people at that place. Okay, I so served Henry Kissinger and Dr. Ruth drinks. You did not. Yeah, yeah, at Malcolm Forbes' house. Wow. I mean, that's just weird. But people are people, right? Who's so? Who do you think is the most famous person that you met? I mean, those are pretty famous people that David you just Bowie. mentioned. David Bowie, right. All right. David Bowie was in my limousine, and he called me a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> and you spent kind of a lot of time with David Bowie. I did. He was a very, very kind man. I mean, there was a period when I came back from New York where I was a limo driver, and this this limo company had this contract, you know, so you'd, you'd go out and to the county airport, and these guys would fly in in their jets, and then you'd drive them out to Star Lake or to downtown or whatnot. And, you know, most people, are, it's anonymous, and it should be anonymous, right? I'm not going to impose my, you know, hey, I'm your limo driver. <laughs> You're just doing your thing, you know? But Bowie and his wife, they couldn't have been kinder. I mean, they wanted to, to know me. It was really weird. It was, like, it was just like a great conversation. Three people just having a conversation. Blah, 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 blah. And so, you know, I'm sure I've told this before. You take Bowie uh, to Star Lake. He said, come on. And so he took me with him backstage. And all of a sudden, like, I'm part of the entourage. And, you know, you meet the stage people, making sure that, hello, hello. And then he turns to me and goes, and this is John. Hello. <laughs> and I'm shaking hands with all these people like I am someone, where I'm just a driver. I'll never forget it. He was just a wonderfully kind, humble, regular guy who became a star when he crossed from the wings onto the stage. It was like huh. you could see this transformation. It was like he turned on a, he switched the gear. Super cool. Wow. And did he look different than you inspected? Like, did he look, was he taller, he was thinner? He was, was he? absolutely, he was a gorgeous man. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. As you might expect. Yeah. And how about his wife? She, Incredible. The two of them, they were, they were shimmering, really. She's one of the most unusual people mm-hmm. ever. I mean, she's Just so beautiful. Wow. Yeah, really beautiful people. Okay. So, anyway. all right. That's good. Gary, the most famous person you met? John and Kathy. <laughs> I met them one time. <laughs> you know, John had a coleslaw stain on his shirt. <laughs> All right, we're taking a quick break. We'll come back. It's the ride home.
Do you need new blinds or shades? Blindster.com offers custom-made blinds, shades, and shutters shipped directly to you at prices less than big box retailers. Blindster blinds are easy to install and guaranteed to fit. Don't overpay for new blinds. Shop today and save big. Blindster.com. The IRS doesn't mess around. If they want your money, they'll take it. They can take your paycheck and bank accounts, too, even threaten your home or business. Don't take on the IRS alone. If you owe back taxes, the smartest thing you can do is call Optima Tax Relief. The experts at Optima specialize in a powerful IRS tax assistance program called the Fresh Start Initiative. And their clients that qualify are saving thousands. One call starts the process to stop the demand letters, stop aggressive collection actions, and stop the IRS from targeting you. But don't delay. It's important to act now while you still have options. Optima is A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau. Optima has already resolved over a billion dollars of tax debt for their clients. Get your life back. For tax help you need, for tax help you can trust, call Optima now for your free consultation. Call 800-965-1433. 800-965-1433. 800-965-1433. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. International travel is open again. So now is the perfect time for that trip to Israel, the trip of a lifetime. A trip to the Holy Land will bring you face to face with one of the most fascinating countries on earth. More than just a vacation, this meaningful trip is your opportunity to enjoy the freedom to travel again. Walking the ancient streets of Jerusalem where Jesus walked, sailing the Sea of Galilee, and floating in the mineral-rich Dead Sea with its healing and rejuvenating power. Sebastian Gorka and Dinesh D'Souza, along with our trusted travel partner, Inspiration Cruises and Tours, personally invite you to experience Israel with them this November. To book your trip to Israel, log on to StandWithIsraelTour.com. That's StandWithIsraelTour.com. Then call 855-565-5519 to secure your spot. Call today. 855-565-5519. Trip to Europe. Visit all 30 Major League Baseball stadiums. Go skydiving. Okay, so you know what you want to do in retirement, but do you know how to get there? Tune in to Your Retirement Blueprint with Kurt Kenotic and Ethan Lane of Accurate Solutions Group Saturdays at 10 a.m. to get answers to your retirement planning questions. Plan today so you can do the things you've always dreamt about doing in retirement. Listen every Saturday morning at 10 to Your Retirement Blueprint with Accurate Solutions Group. Investment advisory services offered through ASG Investment Management, LLC. Ask Alexa to play the word Pittsburgh to hear us there. We're on your Google speaker too. Plus iHeart, TuneIn, and on Odyssey. 101.5 WORDFM, Pittsburgh. We used to do like things to do on the Friday, but uh, there's a lot going on in Pittsburgh this week, which I think a few things are are of note. Kath, this is interesting for you because you of Polish descent. Uh, Today through Wednesday, the Polish Film Festival at the Harris Theater. That's really wonderful. Isn't that cool? I did not even know that was a thing. Organized by the Polish Cultural Council. Sure. Did you know that? I didn't know that. No. This year's festival focuses on the films of groundbreaking director Kirasov. I'm sure. I, I, yeah, I'm you're not, probably mess- I'm completely sorry. screwing that up. Uh, Three Colors trilogy back in theaters 30 years after its debut. A stunning 4K. Oh, look, I I'd didn't love know to go this. to Poland. Oh, I would love to go to Poland too. Yeah, that'd be beautiful, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, Row House Cinemas uh, as well. Uh, Tell us what's going on at Soldiers and Sailors. Soldiers and Sailors. Oh, this is wild. Yeah, Soldiers and Sailors is doing um, Thursday, October 27th through Sunday. Uh, no, I'm sorry. That's uh, that's PPG. Uh, did, 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 uh, let me. I'm sorry. Let me move forward here. Oh, I should have been a little better organized. Why did I miss this? Where'd it go? Yeah, so you can watch Silence of the Lambs. You can watch the film Silence of the Lambs. Friday, October 28th. There you go. Silence of the Lambs. Okay, and of course, the reason that that's funny is because Silence of the Lambs was filmed at Soldiers partially, and Sailors. At Soldiers and Sailors. Partially, yeah. And even even funnier, you were in the film, John. For like literally. Two seconds. Well, it's two seconds longer than I was in the film. Maybe five. Uh, What was the role you played in Silence of the Lambs, John? (laughs) Part of my long roster of playing cops. (laughs) 
Oh, that cop. You played a lot of cops, I did, huh? yeah. That's, yeah, was yeah you were more specialty. like a sheriff, though, in this one, don't you think? Wouldn't you call, you know? Mm, a sheriff with coffee. Yeah. Oh, did you have coffee? Mm-hmm. You were holding the coffee mm-hmm. or you were pouring the coffee? I was holding the coffee. Okay. Passing it out. That's my big... Okay. Oh. What was it like working on the film? Uh, very, uh, very tight. Um, we were instructed, the actors on screen, not to make eye contact with Jodie Foster. Which was fine, because the scene I was in was a really emotional scene with her. I mean, she was coming in at a really, I mean, she had to walk into the camera like someplace else in this world. So you had to respect that. You weren't, they don't want people, hey, how you doing, Jody? You're making small talk. (laughs) Meanwhile, she's like, you know, in the Netherlands of some horror introduction. Yeah. So uh, you get that. Uh, What did you think of the film? I'm not a fan of it, really. I mean, I think I've only seen it twice. It's okay. It's fine. I know some people love the movie. Like, they think it's super scary. I'm kind of mad about it, quite honestly. Okay. Did she win an Oscar for that? I don't remember. Maybe the film won an Oscar. Yeah. Did you get any residuals since the <laughs> film won an Oscar? I do get a buck, like a buck fifty every, you know, six months or so. Okay, that's good. You know, but it's money in the bank. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, it's and retirement. Y- and you know portions of Soldiers and Sailors the rest of us don't know. Mm, yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, a, a lot going on. Yeah, we'll we? talk about more uh, tomorrow. Okay, fine. All right. In the Tuesday edition. Okay. Yeah, thanks for being with us. Have yourself a great night, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Say your prayers. John and Kathy, a production of Salem Media Group.